Hey everybody, Connor here today at eTrailer.com. We're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Firestone Red Label Air Helper Springs here for our 2019 GMC Sierra 3500. So we wanted to go ahead and go through a couple test courses we have here at eTrailer. Number one is a speed bump course, and number two is a slalom course. So I will be honest with you, the ride is a little bit rougher but that basically tells us that our airbags are working because they're inflated. They're making the suspension stiffer so it doesn't flex as much and create as much sag. I can, however, say it definitely feels a little bit more stable back there though. We don't have the porpoising feeling that we did before with the trailer rocking back and forth, causing the truck to do so as well. So now let's go ahead and head on over to our slalom course, get up to speed here and make some maneuvers. And I will say one thing we do notice is the weight isn't bouncing around as much in the rear there. It's helping us maintain a little bit more steady, giving us a little bit better control of our truck there. The steering also feels a little bit more responsive as well. So here's what our air springs are gonna look like when they're installed on our truck. They're gonna actually replace the factory jounce bumper here. And they're gonna bolt on using an upper bracket and a lower bracket. It is a completely bolt-on installation, so we don't have to drill any holes or make any modifications to our truck to be able to install these. So adding airbags to your truck is gonna be a great option for anyone who's looking to tow or haul frequently. Now basically, what this does is, it helps us reduce rear end sag, that's it's gonna be a consequence of putting a lot of weight in our truck bed or carrying a trailer with a heavy tongue. So in regards to suspension enhancements, you have quite a few different options for your truck here. However, I believe airbags, particularly the ones we have installed here, are gonna be your best option. And the reason for this is they're, unlike most other suspension enhancement options, they're gonna be adjustable. Therefore, we can adjust the amount of pressure we have inside our air springs, depending on the load we have at any given time. This is gonna give us the best overall ride quality and support. So in regards to the air springs offered from Firestone, there's gonna be two different types. There's gonna be the standard model and there's gonna be the heavy duty model we see here. Now the heavy duty model are gonna be best equipped for people who are gonna be towing more frequently, even every day. And this is gonna allow us with a greater capacity, 7,500 pounds compared to the 5,000 pound rating of the standard version. So in order to really maximize the setup here with our air springs, you're definitely gonna wanna look into a compressor kit. And the reason for this is the compressor kit is gonna provide us with constant onboard air. Therefore, we can adjust the pressure inside our airbags on the fly. We don't need to worry about pulling over and finding an external air compressor. So if you do feel you would benefit from an air compressor kit, we have plenty of these to choose from here at eTrailer. In fact, we're actually gonna be making a separate video showing you how to install one of the systems on this truck. So before we install our airbags, we're gonna take some measurements here of our factory unloaded suspension so we can show you what a difference the airbags are gonna make. So the first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna measure from the ground to the top inside edge of our wheel well here. And here at the front, that measurement is going to be about 39 and a half inches. So if we come back here to the rear now, we'll take that same measurement. That's going to give us about 42 inches. So now we're going to go ahead and hook up our trailer here. We have a Keystone hideout we're going to be using for this demonstration, just to show you how much the factory suspension can sag. when We have a medium sized travel trailer hooked up. Granted, these measurements are gonna vary depending on what trailer you have. If you have a heavier fifth wheel or a gooseneck, you're obviously gonna get a lot more sag. This is a pretty medium sized travel trailer here. It's not gonna be too much for our truck at all. So we are gonna see a little bit of a sag, but it won't be too much. So now let's go up here to the front of the truck once we have our trailer attached, and let's retake our measurements. Looks like we're at about 40 inches. So the front of the truck actually came up about a half inch. So let's head on back to the rear of the truck now, retake our measurement. We're getting about 40 and a half inches, so it looks like the rear end of the truck did drop about an inch and a half. The degree of these measurements is really gonna be particular to your application, such as what trailer you have and how much weight you have in the truck bed. However, even with the trailer we have hooked up now, the half inch rise in the front 
and the one and a half inch drop in the rear end is actually gonna cause some problems while we're towing out on the road. So the biggest adverse effect, I would say, of the suspension being raised up here in the front, most people really don't realize this. So essentially, we're taking weight off the front axle, and that's not a good thing. And the reason for this is the majority of our braking force and power comes from our front axle here. It's actually about a 60 to 40 ratio from the front to the rear. So by taking the weight off the front axle, we're gonna be reducing our stopping power. And you're definitely gonna be able to notice this while you're out driving on the highway or if you have to come to a sudden stop. A few other adverse effects you're gonna notice here at the front of your truck. Number one, since we are lifting weight off the front axle, we're actually gonna be changing the tire camber. And basically what this means is the alignment, the angle of our wheel is gonna be skewed when we remove some of the weight. And this is gonna cause problems with irregular tire wear. So we're gonna be replacing our tires much sooner. So last but not least, if we head on back here to the rear of our truck, we're gonna notice a couple things caused from that sag. Well, number one is our factory suspension components are gonna wear out sooner. So we're gonna to have to spend more time and money replacing those down the line. Also, we're just not gonna feel as in control of our truck as we would when we're not towing. The trailer's gonna add some weight back there, it's gonna create a new dynamic. We're gonna get some issues with sway and porpoising. It's really gonna make for an uncomfortable ride. Let's go ahead and get our airbags on so we can show you the improvement they're gonna make. So we don't have our airbags installed yet, just to show you how the truck is gonna feel and handle without our suspension enhancements. That way we can pop the suspension enhancements on and show you the improvement. So here's the bump course here. So I will say without the airbags, the suspension is gonna be a little bit softer. So the ride is gonna be a little bit smoother However, we're gonna have those issues with the porpoising that we talked about earlier of our trailer rocking back and forth, not giving us sort of an unnerving feeling for our truck here. We're not gonna feel nearly as much in control. So now we're over here on the slalom course here. There's gonna be two things we're gonna be looking for. One of them, we're not really gonna be able to show you unless we got out on the highway and really came to a sudden stop, but that's gonna be the decrease in braking that we have the weight off the front axle. But what we can show you here is gonna be the side to side rocking, which is gonna be sway caused by the trailer sort of bouncing back and forth during evasive maneuvers. And this is gonna be really unnerving because that trailer is gonna get loose on you. It's really gonna get back there and start wobbling around. You're gonna feel very unsafe driving your rig. So the first step of our installation, we can go ahead and begin partially assembling our upper bracket here. Here's the upper bracket. Here's what it looks like. It doesn't matter which one we grab. It should be the same for this part of the installation. And then we wanna grab two spring clamps, which we see here. And finally, we're gonna need our hardware, which look like this, our flange nuts, our Allen head screws. We're gonna need four of each of those. And now at this time, we're just gonna loosely attach these spring clamps to our upper bracket. So the side with our larger hole is actually gonna go down. It's gonna line up with our oblong hole here on our upper bracket. So we just wanna make sure the smaller hole is facing up, the larger oblong hole is facing down. So now what we can do is, we wanna make sure that they're forming a circle, which we can see here. We can go ahead and attach those. We'll show you how. If we flip the bracket up on its side, we're gonna be able to see this little bezel here, which is where our Allen head screw is gonna go. Put that through there like so, line up our hole, and we'll just loosely tighten on our flange nut. We'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side and for the other bracket. And then once we have this one together, we'll go ahead and do this exact same process on our other bracket. We're not gonna be tightening anything down now, just finger tight should be fine. But that's what it's gonna look like when it's done. So now we're gonna take our quarter inch bolts which come in our kit here. And we're gonna place those through the two holes here on our spring clamp brackets. So again, we're not tightening anything down right now. We're just gonna loosely install them. Now I'm not sure if this matters or not, but the instructions do show the bolt head facing this little contour here on our bracket. So we're gonna go ahead and replicate that. Now we'll go ahead and repeat this for our other assembly here.
So the next step of our installation, we're actually going to be heading on over to the vehicle. Coming underneath the vehicle on either side there, it doesn't really matter. We're going to be removing the factory jount springs. And those are going to be located up here directly above the axle. We see a little pocket here. We see our orange spring. So these need to come out. There's one on either side. Before we do that, I'm going to take some general purpose lubricant here. I'm just going to try to spray it in between the cup and the spring there just to help work it out a little bit. Make it a little bit easier for us to remove. Now we're going to take a large pry bar. We're going to try to sort of shimmy the spring out of the pocket there. And there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and set these aside, but we're going to remove the other one first. We're going to see our emergency brake cable here. We think that's going to get in the way we're installing our upper bracket. So we're going to take a 13 millimeter socket. We have one bolt here. We're just going to go ahead and remove this. And there we go. So now we're going to take our upper assembly here. We're going to go ahead and place that on the vehicle over our jount spring cup. It'll sit right here in this little pocket. So now we'll come up over the axle here. Now we're going to get a 10 millimeter socket ready to tighten this down, but we're going to slip it through here the cup. We may need to make sure our bolts are all the way apart, just like that. And now we're going to begin tightening down these two black quarter inch hex bolts here. We're going to want to alternate back and forth. So we're going to get our 10 millimeter socket for this. We want to make sure we apply upward pressure on the plate this entire time. Now once we get it started, the flange nut should catch and we don't have to worry about holding a wrench on the other side. So the main thing we need to make sure of when we do this is number one, we're alternating while we're tightening, and number two, that the plate is going to be flush to the bottom of the spring cup here. So now that we have the spring clamps around our spring cup, we're going to go ahead and fasten these to our upper bracket here. We're going to be using a 732nd inch Allen key. We're going to snug all these down alternating back and forth side to side and then we can go ahead and torque everything to spec. And don't forget, once we finish this side up, we'll head on to the other side and repeat the same process. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come out from under our vehicle here. We're going to assemble some more components in our kit. We're going to take one of our air springs here. We're going to take our lower bracket. I want to be, pay attention to how we're mounting this. The alignment pin is going to be facing this back flat edge here, whereas the inflation valve is going to be towards the front where this curve is. We also need to make sure that our flange here is going to be facing down. So we're going to go ahead and line this up, flip it over so we can install our Allen screw, which as you see here, it's a smaller one that comes with our kit, they're black. Gonna go ahead and just loosely thread that in. We're not gonna be tightening anything right now, but we are gonna need a, this is a 732nd inch Allen key. So we're just gonna hand tight that for now. Place it like so. We'll go ahead and assemble the other airbag and lower bracket as well. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our lower bracket and airbag assembly that we installed earlier. We want to make sure this bolt is loose enough that we can slide our bracket back and forth on the air spring because we're going to be installing this now. We also want to pay attention to this alignment pin here and the inflation port. So we're going to grab a paint marker. We're going to go ahead and test fit this now. So if we take a look at the bottom side of our upper bracket here, we're going to see three holes. This middle hole is what we're going to try to match up with the alignment pin on our air spring here. Once we get that aligned there through the center hole, we can go ahead and adjust the airbag back and forth so it sits level, even up and down, sits perpendicular, if you will, to the frame. We can go ahead, use our paint marker, we can mark the bracket on the airbag 
That way when we take it off to tighten it back down, we get it in the correct spot. So let's go ahead and install this now. So in order to check that you're in the center alignment hole, it's kind of hard to do. Basically what I do is I get sort of eye level to this bracket here and I just slightly pull the airbag down. So I can get my head up there and I can kind of see where that alignment pin is going to in relation to the three holes. And we're in the center one now. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take our paint marker here and we're gonna mark the airbag in the position on the lower bracket. That way when we take it off and tighten everything back down, we can make sure those two marks are aligned. We can go ahead and tighten our Allen screw on the bottom using our 7 seconds Allen key. However, we wanna make sure our two alignment marks here remain in line with one another while we're torquing it down. The torque values can be found in the owner's manual. So now that we have our airbag secured to our lower bracket, We've ensured that the alignment marks have stayed in place. We can go ahead and set the assembly up on the vehicle. You may want to compress it a little bit to give us a little bit more room to work. And we're going to get up there. Let's make sure our alignment tab went in the hole. So now we're going to take a conical tooth washer here and our large jam nut. We're going to go ahead and secure the airbag to the upper bracket here. We're going to need a 1 and 1 8 inch wrench in order to tighten this down. Now we don't need to tighten this super tight, but we do need to snug it up. Now we'll go ahead and repeat that same process on the other side. So now we're going to take our airline fitting here, our push to connect fitting, and we're going to thread that in to the top of the inflation port on our airbag. Once we get that started by hand, we can come back with our 9 16 inch wrench and snug it down. Keep in mind though, we really just need to turn it around a couple times to engage the thread locker. We don't by any means want to tighten this down all the way. So, just until we feel enough of that thread is inside the collar there. Do one more turn for good measure, but that should be plenty. So now we'll take our 3 8 inch carriage bolts here. There's gonna be a slot on the end of the tab for our lower air spring mount. Place that in there like so. Now we can take these little hooks, which we see here. This bottom hooked in, the radius, is gonna go grab on to the bottom of the jount spring cup. And this top hole here is obviously gonna align with our bolt. So we wanna get our 3 8 inch flange nut ready. Go ahead, sneak this behind the, air, behind the brake line there up into position. And then we can use our nut to secure everything. Now we can go ahead and repeat that same process on the back side. So now we can go ahead and take a 14 millimeter socket or wrench and go ahead and tighten down these flange nuts here. Now we want to tighten them down till our bracket here just starts to slightly bend upward then we know we have enough torque. We also want to make sure that we alternate from side to side. So now we can go ahead and repeat this process over on the other side of the vehicle. The only thing that's going to change is we're going to have a heat shield here which goes in between the airbag and the upper mount. So keep in mind when we're installing our heat shield, we want the flat portion here to be directly shielding our air spring from the exhaust, just like we have it mounted now. There's also going to be one bolt on the back we need to remove. We'll show you that now. So we've already went ahead and removed this, but on our passenger side of our vehicle, on the back side of the jount spring plate here, there's going to be a bracket which holds our emergency brake cable to this little jounce cup here. We had to remove that. Here's the bolt. It's going to take a 13 millimeter socket to remove that. So you're going to have to remove that in order to put on our little hook plates here. So in regards to re-securing the emergency brake cable 
Over here on the passenger side, we don't really have a lot of options and the instructions don't specify anything in regards to this. So we just went ahead and took a zip tie and tied it through both of these holes here to hold it in place, but it's also loose that when our suspension travels, we don't have to worry about it binding and breaking. So if we come on over to the emergency brake cable here on our driver's side, again, the instructions really don't give us any indication of how to reattach this. So we're gonna take another zip tie here and secure it to the factory wiring harness. Now it's gonna be pretty much held in place between the gas tank there and this upper bracket. It's not really gonna move anywhere, but just in case, we'll go ahead and secure this so we can make sure it doesn't get down here in between that bracket and start rubbing on our airbag. That should be perfect. So now that we have the airbags installed, the final thing we need to do is we're gonna take the airline tubing that comes in our kit, we're gonna cut it in half, and then we're gonna attach one to the bag on the driver's side and the other to the bag on the passenger side. Then we're gonna route them here around the trailer hitch, the bumper area, depending on where we wanna mount our inflation valves. Now I will say the majority of people will drill usually a small hole up here, a small hole up there, so they can mount the inflation valves. They're real easy to get to. We really don't have to worry about them getting too weathered. So now we got roughly the halfway point. We're gonna go ahead and make our cut. However, a quick bit of advice here, something that you'll use throughout this installation, particularly when routing the airlines is, we wanna make sure our cuts are as straight as possible. So the tool we use to do this is gonna be critical. Now we do sell specialized airline tubing cutters, but if you have a razor blade, you can get a pretty straight cut as long as you're careful. We'll take one of the ends here. We'll come over the top of our bracket. We're gonna push it into the top of our airline fitting there. All we need to do is line it up, press it in, and then pull it out to lock it in place. Now we can take the airline tubing here and route this to our bumper to where we're gonna mount the inflation valves. Now keep in mind, when we're routing this, we need to make sure we avoid any of the moving suspension components, such as the leaf springs or the shocks, as well as any heat source such as the exhaust. So we have our airlines ran to the rear here. Now again, we have a couple different options depending on where we're gonna be mounting them. A lot of customers like to drill a couple holes up here, sort of in the license plate area, and just mount it directly through there. If you wanna do that, it's fine. However, in the kit, we do have a no drill bracket here which we could use with the zip ties to secure it to the trailer hitch. We'll show you how to do that now if you would like to opt for the drill free option. And just take our other one, just do that same thing for the other side. So now we can take our inflation valves here and using the supplied nut and washers, we can go ahead and attach it to our bracket. Place a washer over there like so. Feed it through the back end here. Put another washer over there. Then we can tighten it using our jam nut. Just like that. So now we'll take the ends of our air lines. We'll go ahead and just press those in the back of the connectors. It's the same push to connect fitting that we used earlier. So once you press it in, pull it out to lock it in place. So our last and final step here is to go ahead and put some air in each of our bags so we can check for leaks. So in order to check for leaks, we're gonna be taking a solution of dish soap and water and just spraying down all of our fittings and connection points. If there is a leak, we should start to see some rapid forming bubbles in which case we'd wanna remove the airline from the fitting and recut the line, or if it's leaking at the fitting, remove the fitting and retighten it using some additional thread sealing if needed. So as you can see here, we don't have any bubbles forming where the fitting threads in here, and we don't have any bubbles forming where the airline goes into the push to connect fitting. So we now know, we now know that that is not leaking, it's holding air and it's ready to go. So now that we have our air springs installed, we've got some air in them, we went ahead and hooked back up to our trailer. Let's go ahead and retake our measurements now. If you remember, our factory measurement was about 39 and a half unloaded, and it looks like we got just about to there. Now we'll come back here to the rear, go ahead and retake our measurement. If we remember, our factory unloaded measurement was 42 inches, 
and it looks like we're right about there as well. So this trailer here, the airbags are gonna be plenty capable, allowing us to tow at the level factory ride height. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Firestone Red Label Air Helper Springs here on our 2019 GMC Sierra 3500.